Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Mass key skill video on dealing with multiple different chains of outcomes involving successive dependent events. So let's look at this question here. I pick two balls from a bag of seven red balls and three green. Fill in this probability tree. Now we explore this in a different video, but I will explore it again. This represents our first choice of ball. So we could either get red or green. We work from left to right. So what's the probability of getting red on our first pick? Well, out of the 10 balls, seven of them are red. So it's gonna be seven tenths probability of getting red and three tenths probability of getting green. Remember that the probabilities go on the lines, the branches, if you were, and the outcomes, whether it's red or green, they go at the end of the line. Now, a probability tree is great at representing a sequence of outcomes. So if we had, for example, this path from left to right through the tree, that means you're picking red on the first pick and then red on the second pick. So if I picked red on the first pick of ball, notice by the way, I'm getting two balls from the bag. So if I picked my first ball, I'm not putting it back because I'm getting a second ball from the bag now. So I end up with two balls. So if I've picked the red on my first pick, what's the probability the second one is red? Well, I've only got six red balls left because I've got that red ball in my hand and three of them are still green. So out of the nine balls left in the bag, six of them are red, so that's gonna be six ninths. So I'm not gonna bother to simplify that. And of the nine balls, three of them are gonna be green. Now what about if I picked green for the first pick? Well now I've only got seven red left and two green. So out of the nine balls, seven of them are still red, so it's seven ninths probability of getting red, given I picked green for the first pick, and then it's gonna be two ninths of getting green because out of the nine balls left, two of them are green if I picked a green on the first pick. Now, hence determine the probability of picking two balls of different colors. Now, as implied by this title, there's multiple different sequences of outcomes where we'd have balls of different colors. What could we have? Well, for our first pick, we could have had red, and the second pick, if it's a different color, could have been green. So we could have had red for the first pick, green for the second pick, they're different colors, or we could have had green for the first pick and red for the second pick. Again, you'll have two balls of different colors. Now, let's find the probability of each sequence of outcomes. The probability that the first ball is red and the second pick is green. Well, the probability of getting red first is seven tenths. Now, if we picked red, if we follow this path where we picked red first, it's then a probability of three ninths of the second being green. So put the three ninths here. And because I use the word and, the first being red and the second pick being green, we multiply them together. So if you see the word and, you times in probability. And multiply these fractions together, that's just 21 over 90. What about green followed by red? Well, the probability of the first being green is three tenths. The probability then, if we picked green on the first pick of the second being red is seven ninths. We multiply them together, oh, we get 21 90 again. And a general point is that if you have the same letters here, but in a different order, yeah. you end up with the same probability. So without doing this working, we could just immediately write here 21 over 90 because we know it's going to be the same probability as above because we have the same letters. Now we want the probability that we got red and green or we got green and red. Now, if we use the word or in probability, we add these together. So 21 90ths plus 21 90ths, we have the same denominator, so we add the numerators, we get 42 over 90. And if we wanted to, we could simplify that probability, but that is the final answer. Now, the second question is just to demonstrate that we don't need the tree to be able to do this approach here. I have five red counters, three green and two blue. I pick two counters at random. What's the probability they have the same color? Now, if we have two picks and they're the same color, what could we have? Well, we could have red and red, we could have green and green, or we could have blue and blue. So as before, as what we did here, we list out all the matching sequences of outcomes according to this description. So if we have the same color, these are all the different matching sequences of outcomes that we're interested in. And then we do exactly the same as before. What's the probability that the first ball is red? We don't need a tree to do this. Well, out of our 10 counters, because five plus three plus two is 10, out of the 10 counters, five of them are red, so it's five tenths. Now, I've already got 
a red count in my hand and I'm picking a second counter. So how many counters do we have left? Well, we've got nine counters left in the bag. And because we've got a red in our hand, there's only four red counters left in the bag. So it's now a property of four ninths of the second counter being red. And this is why they're called dependent events, because your second pick of counter depends on what you picked on the first counter. So notice the property of getting red on the second pick changes because you picked a red on the first counter. And remember what the property of red followed by red, red and then red for the second pick, so we times together, that's 20 over 90. What's the probability of getting green and green? Well, there's three greens, so it's three tenths probability for the first pick being green. And then what's the probability of the second's green? Well, we've got a green in our hand from the first pick, so we've got nine counters left in the bag, and two of those are gonna be the green because we've got one less green in the bag. Again, multiply these together, we get six ninetieths. What about getting blue and blue? Well, the property of getting a blue on the first pick is two out of the ten counters. And then if we've got a blue in our hand, the property of getting a blue again, well, there's nine counters left in the bag, of which one of them is blue, because we've got the blue in our hand. Again, we want the property of blue and the second pick being blue. So we multiply them together. That's two over 90. And again, we just add these together. So we add the numerators because we have the same denominator. And by the way, that's the reason why we shouldn't simplify these fractions, because then we're gonna have the same denominators and it's gonna make it easier for us to add them if we don't have a calculator. So if they're all 90 as a denominator, we add the 20, the six, and the two. That's 28 out of 90, and that is the final answer.